my next priority is the shower it's gonna benefit me a lot uh, to get this thing together not only create more space because I'm gonna put some things in there uh, composting toilet and I'll have a shower and I'll well, it's complete I just need to um, get the right fitting right here I know I could use this but I need one a different one that just goes straight in rather than using another PVC pipe to glue in there and could tra transition from female to male and then I won't need another little piece in between if you know what I mean <clears throat> so there's um, that goes straight outside into just goes down onto the top of the ground I'm going to dig a drain pit back there this is just for all liquids all shower stuff um, able to find the hookups and things that I could use for that that's always the challenge is always the couplers and the what fittings work to connect everything and so I have this Y connector this will be this for the sink it'll go straight down there and I had to find a Y connector that uh, kind of swoops in like that so that when I drain <coughs> when I have stuff go down the drain for the kitchen sink it'll it'll have a directional that way uh, can't you really use a T connector you can feel the cold coming in there but um, <clears throat> you can't really use a T connector because if it comes through it'll just go right up there and it'll probably come back down but it's it I didn't want it to do that so uh, that's just one thing I had to f kind of figure out but I'm going to change up this sink faucet a little bit. This is what came on there. And the gravity fed stuff might work with this because the water comes down the tube a few feet, so it might make it up through this. But, and these tubes are, um, you know, smaller. So I just wanted to create the least amount of resistance for the gravity fed stuff. So I had this other one. Uh, I remembered that I had this. Bought this at a thrift store for like two bucks and it looks brand new. But it's just a, a faucet that goes into the wall or something or a sink that um, the side goes up. And I had this for a farm, kind of an old farm sink, cast iron, cast iron farm sink that I had and this would go right in there but I I decided to use it for this just because of the just the nature of how it's designed <clears throat> so the gravity f uh, fed water will just have uh, less resistance going through that and uh, product water pressure probably isn't going to be that much and I already anticipate that but it's going to have just an easy flow I don't have to worry about a lot of things with the gravity fed system so that's why I want to do that and I'm going to make it so it's interchangeable with a uh, pressurized system and the gravity fed so just do a little three-way switch on the water line and to the pump and to the gravity fed stuff so that's uh, I'm just working on a little mount for the back so I'll just mount right on the side of there and I'll get some just plugs for those and it should work fine. So as soon as I work that out, then I should be good to go with everything. Alright, this is ready to be installed. I do have to do some minor adjustments on this. This is kind of too far forward. I have to just clamp it back a little bit and then buy some plugs for that and then uh, I clamped it on with these old rusty uh, clamps. I think those will work. I'll probably, uh, I did it, I wanted to clamp it and not permanently put it on there because I'm going to change it out if I want, but it's, it's amazing. The, the simplest of solutions and whatever, it, it just takes so much time to figure out what to do. So, ready to go. 
So I took a few more steps. I had to rethink some things because I knew I wanted to have this flexible. And so I had to go to the hardware store and just see what's available for those things. And I saw these rubber elbows here and I just didn't want it to be like all glued permanent PVC pipe. So I get two benefits out of it. I get them detachable so I could adjust, rearrange, and modify stuff if I want um, without having a permanent plus it's flexible because these both the uh, <coughs> the countertop rustic countertop that I made and this uh, temporary shower are uh, not permanently you know, secured to the floor or anything so there might be sli sliding around or something like that so I, I knew I needed to get them at least um, have some kind of uh, flexibility there. So there it is. At least I have a sh you know a drain hooked up for the shower. Tomorrow I'm going to work on uh, the drain for the sink. Essentially, all the drains will will be taken care of. Then I'll modify a lot of other things too. But it's got to work on this um, the shower part of it. But that was a big step. The drainage is officially done as far as the pipes are concerned. Need to work on the other plumbing, but all the drainage is secure, ready to go. So I decided to uh, fill up the water tank. I didn't think I was going to do that today, but I was excited to see the gravity fed system going. So I'm just going to quickly hook up the cold water and I secured the uh, the, the pipes over there. So, And one of the, the couple things I needed to figure out with this water fill up idea, because this is not as convenient as an RV, of course, so I have to string a hose all the way from the house here. So I'm going to probably put a um, just a little stretch of hose with a valve on it so I could control um, the valve here turn it on and off so I have to run back to the house and back that's one thing and then the other thing is uh, freezing during t the uh, winter days so I need to figure out uh, so in the house I put in a valve right next to the main valve for the main water and that little valve has a little opening that I could twist open and just drain the pipes so the pipes will be drained every time I fill this up. So I could drain the hose, get all the water out and everything. So I have to worry about, so it'd be a convenient way of uh, still having to, you know, string the hose out here and then also drain it. So that's, I just had to figure out those things, but I just so curious about that water fed system. It just, it's been going through my head for a couple of years now. So I, I, I just want to see it working. So we're getting close, uh, 30, I think it's a 37 gallon tank, but I'll get it close and we'll then I have to hook up the uh, hot water system and shower head and stuff like that. All right, here you go, moment of truth. Got that hooked up um, temporarily. I don't know if it's going to leak out of here or not because it's not too good, but I'm just going to see it. And I know this is not a news concept, but I'm just excited to not have to use a pump. It saves on uh, battery and cloudy day and your battery goes dead then how do you use your pump stuff like that you know so I turned it on well there you go let's turn it on full blast That's probably all the pressure you're going to get.
Oh wait, actually, uh, there's a little kink, kink in that, so maybe it'll. There, just bear with me for a second. So I just thought of uh, that little vent there, or that, not vent, but that tiny little valve there is not that big. So I could probably just get a bigger valve and then it'd run a lot more, a lot, uh, a lot better. But you know what? I wasn't expecting any more than that. And that's good enough. You have controllable water. goes right outside. And I'm using the drains for the first time as well. So I was pretty confident the concept was going to work. Now we'll just see how it works for the shower with the rain head shower head thing I got. So here it comes here it comes out of the drain. Of course I don't have this hooked up to anything yet. Um, I was gonna either put a bucket there and then eventually dig a a drain pit there. With like a French drain type of thing. I watched a video on that. A lady did that with her composting toilet outside in the shed, so it was probably do something like that. It's running pretty smooth now. I got the bubbles out of that, all the hose. Um, there is a slight kink. And that valve is a little small. So I, I bet if I fix those two things, it'll, it'll run even better. Plus it has to go through that coil of water, a coil of a tube. It'll go directly to the tank when I get it finished. So it'll be better than that. The hot water will be the same thing. I'll show you how to do the hot water later. I hooked up the cold side of the faucet to a bigger valve and a bigger hose. I just want to see if it runs even better. I have to take a second for the air to run out of it. There's still some air in the hose. It's having a hard time getting it out. Yeah, there's still a lot of air in the hose, so it seems like it's just trickling down to figure out how to get that air out of there. Alright, so I had to take out the valve and just release the air as I let water in, filled up the hose. It was air locked, or vapor locked, whatever you call that. Work. 
So on this valve, um, they do sell valves that look exactly like this, but they have like a little kind of like a an air release or a, a drain on the side where you just twist it open and it can allow uh, either water or air to escape. That's what I have in my main water uh, valve in my house. I have one of these hooked up right after the main valve. Just another one of these so I can just release it and then drain the water out of the pipes really easy without having to unhook everything, whatever. It's just kind of a easy so I'm probably gonna have to buy another one just for that. For that little air lock problem. I don't think it'll be a problem all the time. I think it's just the initial time that you hook it up and there's air in it, and then the rest of the time you just make sure there's air in it. Or I mean water in it all the time. So I quickly hooked up my uh, little temporary shower. This is a little shower head that you use for uh, dog baths and whatever I got from my grandma's house. But um, got my drain hooked up anyway, so I I could just start using that, and I could probably just start. Uh, testing out when the water gets uh, to room temperature or whatever temperature is up there. I'm just gonna test it out, see how the see how the temperature feels. I'm I'm sure it's gonna be a little chilly. I mean even though it's room temperature water it's still gonna feel a little chilly on me but I just want to see what it's like. Let's That's the gravity gravity fed shower so far. So the concept is working and that's just one shower uh, that's just one uh the cold water don't even have the hot water valve connected with it yet so that's cool that's really encouraging to see that and if you could just imagine my uh, the rain shower shower head See how slim that is? So a lot of water gets distributed. I'm really curious in seeing how that's going to work when it's up. But I have, I have a lot of confidence. I mean, it's uh, pretty straightforward. It should work. Just need to get heated water through there. Got it cleaned up a little, a little bit in here. And you can kind of see where I marked out some places to cut. I'm going to utilize some of this edge for like holding soap and bottles and stuff like that for shampoo or whatever. And uh, and then work on hooking up the rest of it. One of the things I ran into was this, <clears throat> this needed to be tilted a little bit so the water all rushed up front. And I would put a couple of 2x4s in there just to get the angle right. That was the only little issue and then this floor kind of uh, is bubbling up a little bit <clears throat> not I mean like uh, it's because as it was sitting outside this is actually up on top and as the Sun and whatever hit it it was kind of sagging down as so um, I'm guessing as you know as I use it and as I use hot water and stuff it'll kind of just settle back down but I was also you going to put in like a little um, I don't know what you call it but like planks um, that you could put across there um, I don't know what you call them but they're like little tiles or whatever that are made out of rubber or plastic uh, flexible plastic and 
so then you don't have to step on water. Just like a wet room has, you know, you, you can just have that stand on that, and then the water just kind of goes through that and just down the drain. So I was going to eventually get that stuff, and it'll kind of weigh it down too. So <clears throat> those are the other, other other problems I was, uh, I mean, just minor things, little here and there, little kinks. But um, probably took, I don't know, five gallons out of the tank. I wasn't really conserving water as I let it run, but I know that's like an RV camper, you know, thing that you do is that you conserve water a lot because you only have, you know, the one tank. So usually people just turn on the water, you know, wet themselves down and then turn off the water and then they uh, lather up and then they turn on the water again. You know, it just makes sense that way for trying to conserve water. So that's all I'll end up doing later, but <clears throat> I'm not quite like an RV, so I could fill up water at any time. This is kind of a mix between an RV and a tiny house, so it's tiny house, RV, whatever. I don't know what you call it. <laughs> <clears throat> 